Hi class, I wanted to talk a little bit about the processes that form precipitation in clouds. And the two main processes that we're going to look at are the Bergeron process and the collision coalescence process. So let's start first with the Bergeron process. And the key here is that this process occurs in the higher colder parts of clouds in the mid-latitudes over continents and over oceans as well. And, and so the key here is that they have to be cold, so it has to be clouds that are tall enough that you have a, a high part that's very cold. And in that cold part, there's the coexistence of water vapor, liquid water droplets, and ice crystals. So water is existing in all three phases, solid, liquid, and gas. And what's happening in the Bergeron process is that the ice crystals are growing faster than the droplets. So the key here is that precipitation is formed in the form of ice crystals. Now, when it finally reaches the ground, it can be rain because it may have melted by then. But the formation of the precipitation is in the form of ice. And there's a net movement of water vapor from droplets to ice crystals. So the reason that this happens is that the saturation vapor pressure relative to ice is lower than it is for water. So for example, if we're at a temperature of minus 20 degrees C, our saturation vapor pressure for ice is only 1, where it's about 1.2 for water. So if we take an air mass and we cool it, it's going to hit saturation next to the ice crystal sooner than it is going to hit it next to the water, dro uh, water droplet. And so to illustrate the Bergeron process, we're going to look at two chambers, one that is filled with ice, so this light blue rectangle here is ice, and this dark blue rectangle here represents water. And these are two chambers that are separate, but they're both sealed. And they're both at saturation. So the little dots represent water molecules in the vapor form. And you can see that the vapor pressure over the water at saturation is much higher than it is over ice. And notice that it says the temperature is less than zero degrees C. Now, water can actually be super cooled and still stay in its vapor form. And we'll talk a little bit more about how and why that happens. So what we're going to do now is open this barrier and see what happens to the water vapor above the ice and above the water. So we open the barrier. And what's going to happen is the water vapor molecules are going to move from where there's a high concentration to where there's a low concentration. So we have a net movement from high concentration to low concentration. We have a gradient, a concentration gradient here. And so we can see the water vapor molecules move over here. So now we're going to have a net movement into ice formation via the process of deposition. And so the ice crystals are going to get bigger. The droplets are going to get smaller. There's a net movement of water molecules out of the liquid water droplets. So essentially we're having evaporation of the droplets and deposition or growth of the ice crystals. So we've got a net water transport from the droplets to the ice crystals and an increase in the size of the ice crystals. So to illustrate the Bergeron process, we have this high vapor pressure around the droplets, and we have this net movement to the low vapor pressure region around the ice, and so the ice crystal grows and the water droplets shrink. So the key here is that the Bergeron process has to happen in really tall clouds. So notice where most of this cloud height, and what kind of cloud is this? It's got that anvil top. This is a cumulonimbus cloud, and it's over land. And so most of the cloud is at a height where the temperatures are below freezing. And so those droplets are getting pushed up by uplift in the cloud. We have the Bergeron process, which is causing the growth of the ice crystals that look like snowflakes here. And then as they fall, they pass this freezing point, they turn back to liquid, and it falls as rain. And this is how a lot of our precipitation here in Colorado is formed, even when it forms as rain, when we have these tall cumulonimbus thunderstorm clouds. And the same thing can happen over the ocean. You can see we have the formation of the ice crystals here and then falling down and passing the freezing point and then falling as liquid water. So the difference when we don't have those tall, cold cloud tops is that we have the water staying more as liquid. And this also happens in the regions of the tall clouds that are below the freezing 
level. So in the warm part of those clouds, the water still is liquid, and what happens is these tiny cloud droplets bump into each other and they coalesce into larger droplets. Now they get so big that they'll fall apart, they'll break apart as they fall, and five millimeters is the maximum size. So we, we start here with the cloud droplets colliding and coalescing into a big enough raindrop that can actually fall, and it might get too big, and because of friction and air resistance, it might break apart into smaller drops. And the coalescence occurs partly because of the electrostatic charge of the different water droplets. If we just relied on condensation growth, so this is droplet radius with time, if we just relied on condensation growth, those droplets wouldn't get big enough. And so we need that collision and coalescence process to make the droplets grow big enough that they can fall to the ground without evaporating before they hit the ground. So to compare what we have going on, this is our continental and some oceanic cold rain process where we have these tall clouds, really high vertical extent above the level at which the temperature is freezing. And so a lot of the formation is occurring as ice crystals. And if we have clouds that are lower down, where a lot of the cloud is below the level at which freezing temperatures occur, then we have the collision coalescence process becoming